Hi, I didn't know anybody was out there. Let's take a little time out right now to just sit and relax and reflect on the past and listen to it. Thank you for being a friend. Uh, would you welcome Gail Parent? Would you welcome writer Gail Parent? Please welcome a very funny woman, Gail Parent. I'm going to ask you a really stupid question here, but it's... Do you think that you could ever have a completely faithful relationship? Oh, absolutely. With me? <laughs> the first time we met was on the Carol Burnett Show, which would be 1967. One never knows who's going to come into your life. That's the doorbell. <laughs> oh, I can't see anyone now. I can't. I just can't. It's a man. Open the door. She was in the same airspace as I was, and she was saying lines that we were writing. It was, it was like being starstruck and writing for at the same time. It, it just seemed impossible. My mother said, you can be anything you want. You can do anything. She also said, you're so lucky you're a girl. You don't have to go to war, and you don't have to go to work. This seems to be a new approach to marriage and babies. Well, it's about a single girl who wants to have a baby. She's 35. She's getting worried that she'll be too old. So um, she invites seven men over for the weekend. <laughs> There's really a liberation. You have the right to stay at home and be a sex object. You have the choice, is what they're just trying to say. Yeah, you know, but the, well, nobody has any choice. Wants to be an object. I mean, that's beside the point. Once you're conscious, you well, no longer want to be an object. You want to be sexy. Once fine. you're conscious, they didn't want a woman in the writer's room. They thought that uh, a woman would inhibit the writing. We had to work really hard, and we had to be better. We couldn't just be as good as the guys because they didn't want certainly me around. I feel guilty about not being a political pioneer about not helping more women at first. At first, it was like, I got so much attention of being a female comedy writer. Isn't that cute? And let's have her on television, and let's interview her, because it's so different to have a female comedy writer. Let's make an act out of it. A very, very simple act, very tasteful. I Who's sat that? on stage, right on a stool, yeah. read the book, Nude and on ice. You're kidding. Not <laughs> <laughs> where it's written down that women are funny. I was kind of counting on going back into the perfume business someday. Nah, that's not for me. I know, it's for me. Marriage is so hard because a male and a female shouldn't be together so much. Four husbands, none of which I can understand nor could she understand anybody that I ever married or lived with. The first husband I liked. Lair before practically anybody changed diapers, picked kids up from school, did all those things, which allowed me to blossom. And I hated him for it. <laughs> A man what a man was depended in great part to what his career was, to what he did. Gail was the breadwinner. Welcome, please, Gail Parent. husband number two. I met in group therapy. Now, red flags? Maybe. But I think the red flags were like shooting out of me. There was one hint that my kids say I should have known because 
flowers were delivered to my house that said, Dear Linda, I love you. I can't believe I just met you and you're the love of my life. Love, Peter. Husband number three was the gynecologist, Michael, who I thought was altogether nuts. My joke is always, he, and when he got into bed, he lifted the sheet up from the bottom. It was about 10.30 and I'm pounding away on a piece that I've got for the show. I'm really under the gun because I've got to get it in, get it in the rotation, get down, get makeup, get a script and get on the air, right, at 11 o'clock. And it's Gail. I picked up the phone and I, and I said, yes. And she said, it's me. And she's crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, Michael left me. Well, she'd been trying to, this is probably too much for tell, but she'd been trying to get out of that marriage for a long time. I don't know what gets into me, but it's like, it's at a certain point, I couldn't stand him. I saw and saw a, a very generous, philanthropic man, a very fine person. Were you nervous to get married again? Nah. No, she doesn't crack me up at all. It's one of the strangest things. <laughs> And Gail has explained it, that comedy writers don't tell jokes and are not funny in conversation, that they are just funny on paper. You know what, I'm so funny at home. And, and, and Saul doesn't get my jokes. He doesn't get my jokes. You're the comedy writer and I'm the funny one. He says that all the time. I'm fortunate that you have two sons and seven grandchildren, all of whom I am really fond. This is Gail's son. Hi, is this fun? Are we having fun today? I'm having a great time. How are you? I'm great. I was wondering if you think there should be a support group for sons <laughs> of famous moms. A question for Kevin, actually. Yes. Uh -huh. What's it like having the perfect mother? <laughs> My life was so blessed. I had never written a half-hour situation comedy. Peter had just left me the post-it. <laughs> and here I was supposed to be really funny. Oh, morning, Ma. Dorothy, when was the last time you had sex? <laughs> People love Golden Girls, and a new generation finds it all the time. Do you think it's going to be that easy getting rid of me, Rose? <laughs> that was rhetorical, Rose. <laughs> oh, but what a comforting thought, knowing you'll never be alone. And listen, what the hell, if we do have to go to a nursing home, let's all go together. What I hear most, my mother watched it while she was dying, and it really saved her. It, it's, I, it's so... Nice and interesting. <laughs> but what happens when there's only one of us left? I always looked at these women who were older. You do get a little shorter, although I don't, I don't know because I won't let them. I won't let them weigh me or measure me. I went to my doctor on Tuesday, what is this, Thursday? He told me I had to lose weight. Here's what he said, quote, you've never seen a fat person who lived to be 100. <laughs> that scared me. Not that I think I'm gonna live to be 100, because that would be a lot of wrinkles. Thank you for being Do you know offhand how much you've written? <laughs> thousands and thousands. <laughs> Thousands of words. So many words. We figured we could solve the problems of the world if we put our heads together. I'm, I'm going to leave a little blank in the tape right now for applause and a little time for you to just sit and relax and enjoy that song. Biggest gift would be for